everybody it's pam with silver and sparkles and um i'm back with this journal <laughs> if you're getting tired of seeing it i apologize but um i got a request from someone to do a tutorial showing actually how i constructed this one and i had kind of just um i'd already made it i showed it in one of my videos when we were making some of the ephemera pieces and then I did a video showing how I decorated it, but I didn't do a video showing you guys how I actually made it. And so I've gotten a, actually more than one request. So I thought, you know what? Of course, I can do that really quick. So this is easy. This is a single signature um, journal that is made. Um, I'm using the packing paper um, that we get in the mail in our packages. Lovely color and crinkle and all of that. It's great to, for all kinds of projects. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed making the ephemera, you know, using it as the backing. So we're going to use that. And then I'm going to go ahead and make another one, um, like this one using this kit, which is the September monthly subscription kit for Pink Monarch Prints. Um, but you can also buy it if you don't want to subscribe, you can buy it in their, um, Etsy shop, but you can use any papers you want, really. I mean, it's not, it's not about the papers that you use. It, it's just, I'm going to show you the construction and then you can decorate it, make it anything you want. If you're interested, we're not going to decorate this one or make ephemera. If you're interested in that, you can go check out the other videos. All right, so we're going to set that aside, and the first thing, um, and I've already, you know, prepped my papers, um, and I think I've got them about the right size. So this is in the kit. There's this sheet that's meant to be a journal cover, and they, um, I'm sure they have tutorials on it on their website, but this was to be the spine, and it'd be a nice little journal. I'm using it in a little bit different way, so I just printed the paper, and then when I cut it out, it ended up being 10 inches by 7 inches, so that's kind of the starting point for our cover. Now, the packing paper, I cut, you know, uh, just a little bit bigger, so the packing paper I cut is... Um, one, two, you know, um, one, two, like seven and two eighths. So not quite seven and well, it looks like it's just a smidge over seven and a quarter. And then this one is almost 10 and a quarter, just so you have a little bitty border around it. Again, the, it, that, that part is your, your preference. You could have a little bit more. This paper is quite thin, so you don't want it to be, you know, an inch bigger than the the cover you printed on cardstock because this is so thin. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so you've got options, and the one that I made, I just glued this down. Um, you can use a glue stick, um, and we'll use a combination of glue stick and wet white glue. I'm gonna do glue stick without making a mess on my mat. Hopefully, if you're only using glue stick, do this on a, like a magazine or a scrap piece of paper so you can get really close to the edges. But I'm gonna then take my wet white glue like this and go right along the edges. Um, you do want it, when you glue it to this packing paper, you know, you don't want it to be bubbling up on the other side. And so, using the combination, I can get the edges really close, but then I can also um, have a nice coat of glue easily over the majority of the cardstock. All right, now I do encourage you, let me see if I can, can I find a bone folder here on my desk? You know, really um, press it down, get it nice and smooth. You'll still get, you'll still get to see the lovely wrinkle in that packing paper but then hopefully you won't have too many bubbles. Now, a lot of times when I um, use this packing paper, and I think I've said this in other videos, I will place this under like a big stack of heavy books um, for several hours or even overnight and let it dry really well and nice and flat. It does sometimes curl a little bit just, you know, um, from the glue and all of that. But that is how easy it is to make the cover. Now, I had already also inked around my edges, so if you wanna do that, 
you know, get out your distress ink. And um, I did it for the pages too. I've just already inked and I used um, walnut stain. Okay. If um, you want to see some of the supplies that I use, please click my link um, to my Amazon storefront and you can check it out. I am an Amazon associate, so I will get um, a few pennies if you end up making a purchase, but it's no cost to you. It's just um, uh, Amazon pays that to help creators. So thank you if you have done that. Now we are going to go ahead and fold this one in half. And the packing paper... I mean, before you fold it. The packing paper is not exactly a rectangle. Um, so I am going to take my ruler and my bone folder and I'm just going to score down the middle of that spine so that I know, at least when I'm folding it, that part is nice and straight. See that? So you might want to do that too. Um, if you iron your packing paper first, it's a little bit easier sometimes to get it cut perfectly. Um, I don't mind it being a little bit off, but like here, if I just want to make that look a little more even, I can just take my scissors and trim it off, okay? It's very forgiving. All right, we're going to set that one aside. Now to do the pages, again, I'm using this kit and there's these smaller size um, double pages. And when you print them and then cut them out, they are nine and one eighths. So you could just do nine inches. Don't make your life difficult um, if you want to. And then six and one, two, three eighths, which is almost six and a half. So if you're just, you know, using scrapbook paper or you're cutting other digital paper up, that, that's the size mine, mine are. You can make them any size you want. Um, and then I, again, did packing paper. I did some a tiny bit smaller, some a tiny bit bigger, but um, just to have a little bit of an edge around. So use your paper to help you, um, you know, get that. I Just because sometimes the packing paper acts a little funny, like I cut it on my big trimmer, I always make sure that it's indeed big enough before I start gluing it down, just in case I had a brain art when I'm cutting it. Um, I definitely don't want there to be, um, I don't want it to be too small. And I probably should have glued a few of these pages um, before I got on camera because then I could show you how we're going to stitch it together, but I didn't. So you're going to get to watch me do that. You can fast forward through me gluing all of these pages if you want to. Um, <laughs> I'm going to chat and maybe give you some other ideas and suggestions as we go. So I'm just going to set these aside as I go. In the kit, there are, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the cover. Okay, so it'll be a 14-page journal plus a cover. Um, and like I said, I've already inked around everything. So, um, another idea, this, like I said, this packing paper is nice and thin, but another idea that would be really pretty for this journal, um, or for yours, if you want to try it, whoops, would be, um, to sew, sew these onto the packing paper. Um, you, you know, if you sew on paper and use your sewing machine. And so what I would do if I was going to do that is I would um, just put enough glue, like probably the um, glue stick, like I did, not worry about the wet white glue and not worry if I don't get exactly to the edge, but enough to make it not bubble and um, hold on there. And then once that's dry, just stitch around. Um, I'd probably just go right around the edges. Um, the cover, anything like that would be really pretty um, to take the, see how this one's just a tiny bit smaller, so I have to be careful when I go to lay it down. Um, you know, I think it would just take it up a notch if you like to sew on paper, and I do. I have not figured out <laughs> how to video um, me at my sewing machine. I think when my daughter is home, maybe over Christmas, um, 
she's the photographer that's in New York. Um, and just graduated from college. I'm so proud of her. Um, but I would, I may have her help me try to figure out how to do that, how to set up a, some type of um, tripod or something for my um, camera, which is what I use to video with and see if we can figure that out. Um, I, I could probably, and she, she said like, mom, you're talented, you can figure this stuff out. And I probably could, but it just is not that easy. And um, she she kind of knows how to do all those tools and things. And I would rather craft than try to figure out the technical stuff. So anyway, I am fortunate to have all of my young people, children in my life to help me with some of the technical aspects of having a, um, you know, a crafting business. Um, oops, I want to move this up just a little bit. Um, in this day and age, right? Um, helping me learn all the social media stuff, um, giving me suggestions, <laughs> and then still doing the type of crafting that I like, right? Um, but they certainly are helpful and a joy. Um, and most of them, the well, the girls especially, tend to at least look at my stuff on Instagram. I don't think they really watch my videos. I mean, if you guys do, why don't you leave a comment and let us know that you're watching. Um, hi, <laughs> if you are. Um, I think they're too busy uh, to worry about videos since they're not going to probably, oops, get the glue, just smush it back on there. Um, since I doubt they are going to be making these types of crafts, and if they are, they would be doing it probably with me in my craft room. But uh, maybe they watch, I don't but they, on Instagram, are good about uh, liking stuff. And every once in a while, leaving a comment if it's something they particularly like. Um, so that's always sweet. And I don't know. I think, um, I know my son Daniel thinks it's really, really cute that my husband watches my YouTube channel. Um, but I don't know. I don't think I cut enough papers. I was not... Um, I wasn't as prepped and prepared as I thought I was. Anyway, um, but I don't know that that means he does it. <laughs> I'll have to ask him. Um, and, and I don't think he does much social media at all. He, he likes, he's a gamer and his girlfriend is, and they, you know, they like to play games and stuff. Um, and you know, and they, they like even like board games and things like that but they definitely game on their phones and their computers and stuff um and but don't do a lot of other kinds of social media to my knowledge so anyway that's all right it's all good all right got this one on so you know what just to save us a little time on the video let me see how many pages i have that one nice and smooth. All right, we have one, one, two. Some of these don't have direction and some do. Three, like this one does. Four, five, six. You know what, we're gonna just do six and not worry about it. Um, you can do all as many pages. Well, you don't want to get too many because it's only one signature and it will get very um, chunky. Um, and of course you could make, make pages like this to put in a regular journal um, or you know maybe a different, a journal that is bound differently. And then you could, um, have multiple signatures, but you know, after you get to a certain point, you know, it gets, it's hard. You know, you couldn't have like 50 pages that are just bound with one single, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, uh, signature. Um, see how this one, you know, is chunky, but you know, if you like tried to quadruple that, it would not sew together correctly. That is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so on these, I'm using the same technique that I did with the cover, and I'm just finding what on the digital is that center point. Um, 
and then folding it from there so that I kind of like the edges with this type of journal um, not being perfect. And what I mean by that is when we put all of these together, um, let's see if I can show you. Let's see really quick. It also just helps fold them in half, right? Um, but when we start putting them all together, See how they're kind of a little bit different lengths? Um, and part of that is because you start using up space here where the fold is, but they weren't they weren't cut exactly perfect, and that's okay. Um, I like that look. I think it makes it look a little more, you know, junky, shabby, whatever word you want to use. Okay. So once you fold, whoops, <laughs> these definitely would benefit from having a little more time to dry and not being so um still kind of soft from that wet glue I better close that speaking of glue we don't need it anymore and those glue sticks if you um they're fine for a little while but if you leave them open um they will definitely dry out on you <laughs> whoops okay so I am just putting my pages together and um you can put them in any order you want I kind of like the idea of having the blue. I'm going to just double check that I didn't put anything in here upside down because I'm good at doing that on occasion. And like, I would definitely wouldn't want that butterfly to be upside down. I said some of these don't really have direction, but they almost all have a little bit of something that um, kind of makes it, you can tell which direction it's supposed to be, even if it's really faint. I just decided to add a little bit of ink. I had a little bit of white showing from the printable there. And later, when I go through, I'm sure I will add some distress ink to these pages as I go. Okay, so this is our signature. And you kind of want to just get it folded and happy being together. Um, and like I said, it... Um, comes together quite easy, but you may want to let yours dry a little bit. All right, let me get our cover. Then we have our cover, and it's looking really good. And I'm going to just, um, here, that's that little scrap of, that little piece that I started to cut off, I needed to go all the way across with, or at least like that. Get that little scrap off of there. I am going to ink this. Um, inside fold for you and hopefully you're going to be able to see when I tell you how I'm going to center this top to bottom. All right, make sure it's not upside down. There we go. Now these pages, I want to lay, I want to open them up and I want them to be approximately the same, the same distance um, from the top of the cover to the bottom of the cover. And then I just use a couple of jumbo paper clips. Uh, you could use a binder clip, I guess, whatever. And I'm gonna clip these so they stay in place. And I don't have to worry about them wiggling on me. Okay? And I usually just kind of double check everything. Just make sure everything's folding up the way that I want. If it wiggles a little bit, let me get it back. But we are going to um, punch holes right through. I should have here. I'm going to take this off. Let me ink this one as well so you can see the, the center, the fold line. Before I, before I start doing it, it also helps me see it. So there you go. You want them as even as you can is the whole point of this. Um, so that... When you sew and we um, punch the holes for our stitch, that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it when we punch through, hopefully it goes right through the center line of all of the, the pages and it looks nice and neat. I have people sometimes say, you know, I made this, but it's not as neat as yours. And I will tell you, don't get discouraged practice 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 really does help um and the more you do it the easier it gets to make it look neat 
um, whether it's something like this or a one page wonder, whatever, you just, I don't know, it almost becomes more like you can see where you're going to have a mistake before you do, the more you do it. Um, a little bit of muscle memory, maybe. Okay, I'm confirming that nothing is upside down because now I'm not sure. Looking for that piece that had the butterfly on it. Maybe it is upside down. I'm gonna take it apart yet again. Look, it was upside down. Look at that, guys. I almost sewed my signature in upside down after I told you to be careful of that. So it is better to take the time to take your paper clips off, like I have three or four times, and get everything lined up the way you want it. That's part of that neatness too, I guess. All right, we are gonna do the simple, I've demonstrated this before, but we're gonna do it. Uh, the three hole pamphlet stitch. And I lay my ruler down so that I can find the center point. And again, this is seven and mm, a little more than seven and one eighths. I'm gonna use the centimeter mark on my ruler because it's gonna be a whole lot easier. It's 18 centimeters, nine is half of 18 and I'm just piercing a hole. It didn't go all the way through, but so that I can come back in a minute and punch them through. And then I'm gonna come up three centimeters, and then I'm gonna punch a hole at 15 centimeters, because then I'll be three centimeters from this edge. And you can um, see lots of videos on how to do pamphlet stitches. I'm doing this basic three hole, but you could do a five hole, you know, there, there's different ones. So if you're interested, I encourage you to, um, you can search through some of my videos to find different ideas and you can um, look at other creators too on YouTube. All right, and look, it lined up right on that center fold line. I don't know if you can see it, but I can and it looks really good. Very happy with that. All right, I'm gonna use a waxed thread. If you don't have this, you could use some embroidery floss or other strings, um, but I do like this because it doesn't slip. And again, I get it on Amazon. All right, I'm gonna make it three times the height of my journal. And I just use the journal to help me measure it. So three times. And then you do need a needle. I wonder where my big needle is. It's like always here. Oh, I know where my big needle is. We'll get a different one. Um, my big needle is, I'm repairing a pillow that we have. And it it's a pillow my dogs like to sit on, on the sofa. <laughs> this was kind of like the dog's pillow. All right, we're just going to pick a needle. You know what? I have one that is my favorite. And I turn it in, whoa, upside down. Um, so that it's easy for me to find it. And it's obviously one of these. Um, so that's my trick. If you know you really like a needle, I like this one. I'll put it in here upside down so that it's easier to find. And I like this one too. Um, but anyway, the pillow is, we got my other big needle that I really like that I keep in my pin cushion. It's a little bit sharper. Look all the ink on my fingers. Ah! I'm not dirty, it's just ink, I promise. Um, anyway, I am doing a piece of, an, app, an applique stitch of this really pretty fabric on top of the pillow to make it look really funky and because there's a hole and I wanna cover it up. That's where my needle is. Okay, thread your needle. You're gonna go through that center hole and I am starting on the inside because I wanna tie my signature on the inside of my book. If you want to tie your signature on the outside, start from the outside. I hope that made sense. We're going from the inside out. Don't pull the tail all the way through, leave enough, okay, that you'll be able to tie. And it doesn't matter if you go up or down at this point, I'm gonna go up. And I'm just using my mat to help me push this big needle through that little hole just saves my fingers and my hands a little bit. Okay, double checking, I haven't pulled my tail out. So now we are going to skip the center hole and go to the hole at the bottom. Again, push it through. 
All right, and now we are gonna go back through the center hole to bring us inside. All right, so I've demonstrated this stitch lots of times, so it's super easy. The big thing is to make sure you have one end of your string on either side underneath the center string. Now, again, this is just one signature, but I always encourage you to check the outside of your journal, make sure there's like, it's not a big gap of string sitting there or something that everything's lined up perfectly. We are going to tie a knot three times. So I, I do one and I do two and then I switch hands and do three. Supposedly that locks it. I think Pam at the Paper Outpost told me that years ago in a video of hers I watched. And so now I do it that way. So thanks, Pam. <laughs> okay, and then what I do every time I sew a signature in a journal is I just take the time either with my fingers and our bum folder and I turn every page and I crease it down. Again, if you talk about like things looking neat or you, you, you like the end product, sometimes this one little step, what it does is it get, again, it helps it be happy all being together and then we go to the other side. But it also gives you a chance to just eyeball each page, make sure nothing's upside down, um, if that's gonna matter to you. Um, make sure we didn't somehow, in stitching, miss a hole, I don't know, whatever might have happened that would make us unhappy in the future, we can catch now and fix it before we put a lot more effort into the journal, okay? Now look at how nice and skinny this one is. I love it. I mean, honestly, you could just start writing in this journal and be done with it. And then whoever's using it, maybe add a picture or something, right? I mean, it's just a lovely journal, just like that. Now I am thrilled with how our nice decorated version turned out. Um, so like I said, go check out that video if you want to decorate it. Um, or make some of the ephemera pieces. There are video, there's a video on that. So basically, this ended up being like a whole series of how to make a journal using some packing paper. So this one ended up a tiny bit smaller. Hmm. You know what I think I did? I'm thinking about it now. I think I printed this at a little bit larger um, size when I made it. Um, I was playing around with the settings on my printer and I forgot I had done that. This is exactly how it comes out um, of my printer anyway when I print the kit. Okay? A little bit different sizes. I hope you guys like it. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. All of these things help me keep making videos for you guys. It's a huge help. So thank you so much. Uh, have a great day. Until next time.